Hello, my name is Eloise and Rufilwe is here to help me again. Hi everyone. In the last lesson, we worked out a formula to calculate the distance between any two points in the Cartesian plane. Today, we are going to use this formula to calculate distance in a triangle. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to apply the distance formula to calculate the lengths of the sides of a range of shapes. Let's begin by thinking about distance. We all cover distance each day. Most days you drive or you walk to school. All these distances could be calculated with our distance formula. I asked Rafilwe to make a copy of the page in her map book where her house is and have it ready for our lesson today so that she can show us the route she takes to get to school. So Rafilwe has to walk on these two sides of a triangle. The actual distance she covers is longer than the shortest distance from Rafilwe's house to the school. Thanks Rafilwe. Now let's have a look at these distances a bit more mathematically. Let's plot points on the Cartesian plane to represent Rufilwe's house here at B, the school here at Q, and the corner of Betlile and Tau streets is R here. Okay, if we draw lines from P to Q to R, and then to P, we have made a triangle in the Cartesian plane. The shortest distance between P and Q is the straight line PQ. The distance Rafilwe has to walk from P to Q is the length of PR plus the length of QR, a longer distance. If we calculate the lengths of PQ, QR and RP, and add them up, then we have calculated the outside edge of the triangle. In mathematics, we call that perimeter. Let's take a closer look at the coordinate geometry involved in triangles. Rafilwe, can you plot some points on a Cartesian plane for us? Start with the point A, 1, 2. So A is 1, 2. Therefore, x is 1 and y is 2. Right. And b, 7, 2. And then c, 4, 7. Great. Now I want you to join the lines AC, AB, and BC. We are going to work out the perimeter of this triangle ABC. For that, we need to know the lengths of each side of the triangle. Rafilwe, let's start by working out the lengths of AB. Must I use the distance formula? What do you think? Well, I think that you can get AB just by looking at the diagram. Okay, how would you do that? Well, you see that AB is flat. I mean, parallel to the x-axis. And you can count how many units lie between A and B. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So AB is 6 units in length. We could have used the formula here and it would also have worked, but it wasn't necessary for this line. AC and BC are slanted, so we will need to use the distance formula for them. Do you remember the distance formula? It is AC equals the square root of x2 minus x1, all squared, plus y2 minus y1, all squared. Okay, so let's do it. So if we write the coordinates of A and C again, and we label them x1, y1, x2, y2, we can substitute into the formula and get... 4 minus 1 here, 
7 minus 2 here. Okay, that's 3 squared plus 5 squared all under the square root, which is 9 plus 25, and that's 34. I'll work it out. So the square root of 34 on my calculator gets an answer of approximately 5,83. Let me do BC now. I'll write down the coordinates of B and C and label them with X1, Y1, X2 and Y2. And I substitute and do the working. I get an answer of, it's approximately 5,83 again. So now that we have calculated the lengths of all the sides of this triangle, we can work out the perimeter of the shape. Do you think you could do that for us, Rafilwe? Sure. Well, the perimeter is 6 plus 5,83 plus 5,83, which equals 17,66 units. Well done. Now have a look at AC and BC again. Do you notice anything interesting? Um, hey, they have the same length. So the distance formula helped us to show that this triangle must be an isosceles triangle because two of its sides are equal. So if I wanted to show that a shape is a square, could I use this formula? You can use this formula whenever you need to compare distances. Just remember that a square is more than just equal sides. The angles have to be 90 degrees too. Okay. So, what about a circle then? That's a good question. Actually, a circle can be defined by the distance formula. Let me show you. Let's start with the center at the origin. The coordinates of the center are 0, 0. Let's draw a circle like this around the origin. Did you know that the points on a circle are those points that obey a certain rule? What rule is that? The distance from the center to any one of the points on the circle must be the same. If we draw a line from the center to any point on the circle, that line will always be the same length. We call that line the radius of the circle. Can we work out the radius? Yes, all we need is the coordinates of at least one point on a circle. Here is a circle with its center at the origin, O. If the point P, 4, 3, lies on the circle, we can find the length of the radius OP. Do you think you can do this for us, Rafilwe? Well, if you say we can use the formula, then I reckon it'll be quite easy. The radius is equal to OP. I'm going to write the coordinates of O and P down. Then I substitute into the formula, like so. 4 is x2, 0 is x1, 3 is y2, and 0 is y1. Aren't you worried that x1 and y1 are both 0? No, I'm actually quite glad, because then it makes the working out even easier. You see, OP equals the square root of 4 minus 0, which is 4 all squared plus 3 minus 0, which is 3 all squared. So the radius of OP is going to be the square root of 16 plus 9. So OP equals the square root of 25, which is 5. So you found that the radius is 5. Well done, Rafilwe. Now there are some other points on the circle that we can find quite easily. Can you tell me what the coordinates of the x-intercepts and y-intercepts are? Okay, let me see. If point A is 5 units away from the center and it lies on the x-axis, oh, I know, the y-value is 0 because it's on the x-axis. The x-value is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units away from the origin. So it'll be 5. 
Yes, that's right. Now, what about B? At B, the X value is 0 and the Y value is 5. It's really easy now. C is minus 5, 0. And D is 0 minus 5. And the diameter? From C to A would be a diameter, so the distance is 10 units. That is totally correct. You could also have used the fact that the diameter is twice the radius, so the length of the diameter is 10. So sometimes you can just think your way to the answer using the diagrams, and at other times you need to use the formula. I think I know what I'm doing now. Well, I think so too. Let's recap what happened today. First, we learned that the lengths of the sides of a triangle can be calculated, and if you add them up, you can find out what the perimeter is. But remember, we also said that we can do that for any shape. We saw that the distance between the center of a circle and a point on the circumference of the circle is called a radius, and we can calculate the length of the radius using the distance formula. So today we found that the distance formula is just a tool we use to do coordinate geometry. Now it is your turn to use the distance formula to find out more about shapes. Here's the task for today. Plot the points P, negative 3, 3, Q, 1, 1, M, 0, negative 3, and N, negative 4, negative 1, on the Cartesian plane. Now show, by using the distance formula, that P, Q, M, N is not a square. Thanks for the lesson. I really enjoyed it. And thanks for your help, Rafilwe. See you next time. Bye-bye.